In this video, we're talking about engineering student life and my top five engineering success tips for 2020, and we're starting right now. Hey, 1% Nation, I'm Jake Voorhees, and welcome to episode 104 of the 1% Engineer Show, where we empower young engineers to rise to the top 1% of their career. So if you wanna be a successful engineer, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell. Engineering Student Life, my top 10 tips, is one of my higher performing videos, and it's two years old, so I wanna make another one and give you guys some tips for 2020. This video is really about one core thing and five ways that you can do it, five examples of how I did these things when I was in university as a civil engineering student and these things that I did around this one core suggestion changed the trajectory of my student and professional career forever. So let's get started. Surprise Todd. What the, 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 the. It's a weird year. It's hard to be successful during this thing, COVID-19. So I wanna say that these are things that you can do right now in 2020, and also these tips will be timeless. You can get back to those in 2021 and beyond and still use this advice in a productive fashion. Before we get started with the tips, let's peel back the layers as to what type of student I was. Ogres have layers, onions have layers. You get it. I was a terrible engineer until I figured this stuff out. I almost flunked out of engineering. I went to University of Delaware and it was a big change in challenge and workload and the things that I had to do to be successful. I never went to class on Fridays either. I spent a lot of time partying and socializing and, and like most college students focused on the non-academic, non-actual college part of college. We partied all the time and I spent more time probably playing video games, Diablo 2 with my four mates than even studying. I finished my freshman year with something like a 1.9 GPA. It was horrible. My parents almost killed me. I don't know how I even made it. Then in sophomore year, I got started and, and repeated all the same issues again. Stop it. Get some help. We had a house this time. We were having our own keg parties. We were going nuts. And then around halfway through sophomore year, something changed. I committed to being the best engineer I could be, and I started to really forge better relationships with my professors, and this created a chain reaction of things. This entire video is five ways and five tips to have better relationships with your professors, whether that's only one or two or three. It was relationships with professors and extra things that I did with professors that changed every Thing for me and I'm gonna teach you guys how you can do it too. So let's get into the five things you can be doing to make better relationships with your professors so that they can change the trajectory of your career. I wrapped up sophomore year pretty well and then my fourth semester got serious. And then starting off junior year, in the fall, I'm now halfway through my engineering curriculum. I committed to be different, to be better. And I started to communicate really what I wanted for my life and my career with my professors. And that's what tip number one is, is to show your passion. During fluid mechanics one day in junior year, at the end of the class, my professor Jack Paleo said, hey guys, I have a project that I want one of you to work on. There's not quite enough funding for a graduate student, so we can have an undergraduate student work on this that's actually paid. You get great experience. He said it was a type of research that he does in his career. Even though he was an oceans engineer, he was working on a traffic engineering project. <laughs> As you guys know, I went into traffic engineering and I explored this. So back then, I didn't really have much exposure into the industry. I didn't really know if I was gonna like it. So I'll never forget that day in class. My attention chimed right up and I ran up to Dr. Paleo at the end and then I said, hey, I really want this opportunity. I'm the one for you, I'll tell you why. I'm super passionate about this. I've always dreamed of having a career that was just like my childhood days of playing SimCity and I told him this. And he said, okay, this is good. And he gave me a time to come to his office and talk a little more deeply about this research project. He was basically doing interviews with students. He wanted to pick the right one. So my professor boiled it down to three students. I was one of them. I was a finalist, essentially. And I'll never forget what Dr. Paleo said to me in his office. He said, listen, Jake, you don't have the best grades. Actually, you're on paper not a very good student. You know, he would step across the line. Habitually. He's a habitual line stepper. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? But you have this passion within you. You have this fire. The way you excitedly talk about this project, I'm gonna choose you because I know you're gonna put in time. I know you're gonna put in the effort for this project to be successful. And this changed the way I thought of things. But you got your rhythm going now. 
This changed the way I saw my engineering career because if somebody who has the decision-making power, like a professor or somebody who's gonna give you an internship or a job later, if they believe in you, if they like you, if they think you're the one, it doesn't matter what your GPA is. It doesn't matter what your certifications are. It may not even matter what type of degree you have. I see tons of engineers working in all different types of industries because they had a relationship with somebody that they communicated their passion to. I want candy! I want candy! Hey, shut your mouth! And this person believed in them. So tell people your dreams. Tell people what you want to do for your career, particularly people who can change the course of your life because just maybe your passion will light a spark within them and helping you get to where you're going will become contagious and these people will see it and want to push you forward. Tip number two is offer to get more involved with what they're up to. During my senior year, I reached out to the transportation professor, Dr. Sue McNeil, and I offered to help her. I said, what do you guys need help with? I wanna get even more experience. I wanna help you. She was the most senior transportation engineering professor at University of Delaware at the time, so I really wanted to just help her and build a better relationship with Dr. McNeil. And if I could maybe make a little bit of extra money on the side. like what I did with the undergraduate research or bolster my resume, great. great. So Dr. McNeil, she replied back and said, actually we're looking for a grader for transportation engineering, the junior level class that you already took, that you got an A in, would you like to be our only grader for this? I said, absolutely. And I was able to make it a little extra money, I was able to add one more piece of experience to my resume, guys. And actually, it was this that helped me get into grad school. We'll get into that a little bit later, guys, but reach out to your professors. They're working on so many different projects and they're constantly being invited to be a part of committees and task force and all types of things that they just don't have time for, but maybe they could take on one more project if you were there to help them. Okay, guys, tip number three on how to have a great engineering student life and build good relationships with your professors so you get good opportunities is to tell them your goals. Tell them what you want in your career. Not only passion, this dream, this drive, this fire, but what are you trying to achieve? What type of job do you want? What sector? Do you really want to get your master's? Do you want to get your MBA? Do you want to work for a specific company like NASA or Tesla? If you communicate your goals to the right person, maybe that person has an opportunity, has a relationship, has a connection, has the ability to help you reach that goal. But if you don't ask for help, if you don't tell people what you're trying to do, what you're trying to achieve, then they will give you nothing. Ask for nothing and you receive nothing. So this is what happened to me when I did this. My senior year in the fall of 2008, that was my final year in university, to graduate in the spring of 2009. All of you know, we're in the midst of this global crisis and economic meltdown right now during COVID-19, but the last time this happened was 11, 12 years ago during 2008 fall and 2009 spring. I never planned on going to grad school. I never planned on getting my MBA or going and becoming a technical thought leader. I wanted to go right into the industry, start making money, climb the corporate ladder, and then the housing bubble burst and this thing went nuts. And the job market was terrible. Even though I most likely could have gotten a job, it was a pretty scary run task at the time. So most of my friends, my girlfriend at the time, which was a way better student than me, were starting to look at grad school. They were going to delay the job hunting process. This is maybe something that some of you should be thinking about right now, because if your engineering focus industry is weakened by COVID-19, why not just delay it and get more education, particularly if you can get it funded? So I went to Dr. McNeil, the professor that I graded for, and I told her what I was trying to do now. Because she already liked me, she believed in me, she picked up the phone and said, okay, you want to do traffic engineering for your masters then here's the four schools you need to look at she said Virginia Georgia Tech Purdue and Wisconsin Georgia Tech is a great school it's really hard to get into Virginia engineering is pretty good Purdue's pretty strong and Wisconsin I didn't know anything about it to be honest I just knew it was a big school with a big football program and it's, it's red. red and so I took the GRE and did super terrible on the verbal, but decent on the math, and I applied to these four schools, as she said. I didn't hear back from any of them. They didn't even tell me that I suck enough to say, no, you're not in. They just literally ghosted me. And then I got an email. Wisconsin said, hey, we want to fly you out to talk more about this graduate opportunity. I said, what? And my mom said, what? And so they flew me out and I didn't even really realize what was happening, but my professor picked up the phone and she made a call to Dr at University of Wisconsin. They got their PhDs together at Carnegie Mellon and stayed in touch. 
and she must have said something to Dr. Because I got a meeting with her, it didn't go great. I had a meeting with several other professors, but two weeks later, I got a call and they said, we're giving you full funding to come to the University of Wisconsin on a, what they call graduate research assistantship, which means that you can get your graduate degree, but you have to basically work as a researcher in this lab and write papers and work on this 100 page thesis. And I got an opportunity that I didn't deserve. I didn't have the grades for because I had a teacher who believed in me and she reached out to her network. I told her what I was trying to do and what my goals were and she helped me achieve that goal and it changed my life. So tell your professors what your career goals are guys. They can help you achieve those. The fourth thing that you can do is invest in this relationship. Go to your professor's office hours. Right now during COVID-19, they're stuck at home more time than ever. I guarantee you that there are professors out there who are offering virtual office hours and you can literally have a weekly or bi-weekly meeting with professors right now just because they can. They're already sitting at home and if you invest in them and you spend time with them and you show up and you ask questions just like a regular student would who stays after class, goes to office hours, comes early, talk to the professor, but invest in this relationship. Put in the time, make sure you stand out. If you're having virtual classrooms right now, raise your hand, participate, show these professors that you care about their perception of you because they certainly care about your perception of them and they want you to succeed. They want their students to go out there and make it. They want to make the university proud and produce engineers who go out there and get great jobs after their course after you get that degree. So spend time with them, invest time with them. Seriously guys, make this a goal. How many of you are gonna do this? Comment below if you're gonna email your professor and ask for a one-on-one -on -one virtual office hours right now. Try to make this happen, get it going, you're not gonna regret it. Tip number five guys, and I kind of alluded to this in the last tip, but it's to make the school proud. You never know what some of these professors will do for you. Let me give you an example. I didn't have the best guidance professor assignment when I was in university. All of us engineers were given a young professor to help us choose the right classes. I didn't get much value from her, so I just started to choose all my own classes myself. And, and this, this was, was a big mistake. mistake. So here we are again, senior year. I get an email from the dean that says, hey, we'd like to schedule your final spring semester audit of your transcript so we make sure that you have all the credits that you need to graduate with your civil engineering degree in the spring. I said, okay. okay. Okay, great. And so we get into this meeting and Dr. Michael Chages, who was my structural engineering professor, he's still here. He served as dean of the entire civil engineering department for a couple years. He's looking through my transcript and then he raises an eyebrow and says, oh no, Jake, there's a problem here. I said, what? And he kind of had a voice like this. He said, yeah, so you took a criminal justice class and it doesn't count towards civil engineering. I said, who? He said, yeah, it doesn't count. And here I am panicking in this moment because I'd already mentioned in this video guys that I took winter session I think for three or four winters in a row which is extra money and extra time and I crammed in a lot of extra 18 credit semesters later on in junior and senior year when I was doing better I worked so hard for four years and I thought this was all over and here we are at the finish line like two months before May we graduate I think it was May 30th and now he's telling me that I don't have what I need to graduate I'm three credits one class short because I took this stupid criminal justice course sophomore year two years ago and Dr. Chages looks up at me and I'll never forget and he said you know what you're a good student Jake you've been a grader you've done research got an internship for Federal Highway because I invested in Dr. Rusty Lee I went to his office hours it got me basically a federal job as a senior for the winter session Dr. Chages said we want students like you to leave Delaware and go on and kill it and crush it and as quickly as possible move on to the next thing and make Delaware proud. We want you to be seen as a Delaware engineer forever and we don't want to hold you back. So I'm going to make this class count. You're going to get credit for that criminal justice course. I couldn't believe this happened. He basically changed the rules for me because I was a good student. I had done all the right things. I built all these extra relationships with professors. I invested in them by going to their office hours and spending more time with them and got more opportunities. I was a grader. I did research. I did all of these things and as the dean of the civil engineering department, Dr. Chages knows who these students are. These professors are talking about us. They're talking about you guys. Some of you, the real 1% engineers that are watching this video right now, you know that you are one of these students that you're getting talked about by your professors right now in high school or maybe even college. So make your school proud, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, my top five tips for engineers right now, how to build better relationships with their professors. Thanks again for watching episode 104 of the 1% Engineer Show, guys, where we empower young engineers to rise to the 
the top 1% of their career. So if this is you, make sure you hit the bell and subscribe. Comment below on what you're trying to figure out in your engineering journey right now and why. If this video helped you guys, give it a like. It helps so much. I have a Facebook group with 1,800 engineers where you guys can talk about what you're up to in your engineering journey. If you want the 1% engineer kit, guys, which is five eBooks for your success, follow the links below. See you again in another video, guys. Bye-bye.